Good afternoon. I have with me today Mr. Stuart Bowden, Global Chief Strategy and Product Officer at Wavemaker. Thank you, Stuart, for taking the time out. Thank you. Uh, Stuart, firstly, when you took over as a Global Chief Strategy and Product Officer in 2021, your job profile read as this, to ensure clear communication, continuity, and free-flowing provocation between strategy where ideas are created and product where ideas are converted into growth for the agency's client. That's quite a read. <laughs> but uh, wave makers had an impressive run since then. So what have you done right? Oh, well, um, uh, yes, I think, um, I think we have built the right tools and the right training to be able to bring positive provocation to our clients. Um, it hasn't been an easy few years for many businesses, for many industry sectors. And I think um, as, they, as they start to uh, think forward about how they uncover growth, how they find new audiences, how they create more value, they know they need to do things differently. And so uh, our ability to bring them fresh data, fresh perspectives, fresh audience opportunities, I think is critical to our mutual success. Uh, Stuart, uh, now everywhere we go today, it's, you know, the 360 degrees consumer journey and life cycle is what is discussed. But when we go back a few years, Wavemaker with you as a driving force was an early adopter in making the consumer journey central to the way the agency and the brands operate. What have been the key learnings and, you know, what have been the implementations, any, impl any things that you've implemented? Um, I'd like to take credit for the uh, for, for our folks on journeys, but I think it's almost 14 years now that the agency has been really investing in understanding how consumers navigate paths to purchase, and uh, uh, the foundational data for that is proprietary research that we've been carrying out annually. Uh, I think we're we're close to 1.4 million individual uh, interviews that, that we've that we've gathered over that time in some detail. It's a 45 minute interview. We try and understand exactly what people thought they were going to do and the journey that they took through to purchase. Uh, obviously over the last four or five years, that, that journey and that purchase has become you know, fully digitized and more complicated. And so we've had to work quite hard to bring in uh, fresh data sources and integrate them into the way that we research and think about customer journey planning. So the, the, the team have been working quite hard to bring in uh, uh, live platform data to bring in secondary research data sources and integrate them into our provocative planning process so that when we talk to clients, we can see right the way through to the retail aspects of the funnel uh, and we can really understand what that whole paid, owned, earned experience has been like for an individual consumer. Uh, you use the word complicated. Mm. Now, with the consumer present across so many platforms and uh, basically we live in an omnichannel environment, how do you ensure a consistent performance, uh, sorry, a consistent communication and messaging across platforms? Yeah, I think it's, a, it's, su it's such a challenge for marketers um, in particular, I think. Um, planning across platforms is relatively straightforward from an investment point of view. We can bring the right modeling, the right analytics, and the right data to help solve that question about how we budget and how we move consumers through that journey. I think executing, executing consistently for, for uh, uh, clients themselves is quite difficult. They probably have separate agencies that work in different parts of the funnel, different parts of their own business perhaps work with, um, you know, work with PR, work with on-site, work with retail, and work with advertising. So I think it's a it, it's, it's a it's an integration task and a, almost an organizational redesign task as much as it's a technical um, challenge. Uh, and obviously, I think organizational challenges are usually harder to fix than technical challenges. Mindset? Yeah, I think it is mindset. I think organizations you know, aren't used to integrated thinking. Most organizations are structured into departments or into divisions. Those divisions have their own P&L and their own leadership. And sometimes unpicking some of those tensions inside our organizations or in client organizations is is the hardest part of the task but i think if the business if the business really wants to get it right and increasingly clients i think and, and, and agencies are understanding they have to get this right they have to give a consistent experience across all of their touch points with the consumer if, uh, if they really want to take them through to purchase if the will's there inside the business then i think we're seeing clients restructure around that uh, just a follow-up question to what you said. Uh, you know, everybody is operating primarily in silos and integration is the way forward. So any example you can share where this has been done and how it has worked out? Uh, I think um, 
I think it, we try and support it by building platforms that, that lots of different clients can join us to co-work on. Mm-hmm. So inside uh, inside the WaveMaker business, we launched the WaveMaker OS uh, about three years ago now, which, which, is, which is a kind of single home for the 9,000 WaveMaker people. All of our tools and our data systems are available there. All client projects are open to people who work on that client around the network. And, and I, I think that first... Um, that first step to, to, to democratizing data and democratizing access to what's happening is, is kind of critical. Uh, and we're just launching WPP Open this year, which are a, a client-specific version so that different clients from different divisions in their own business can get a better understanding about all the work that WPP is doing on their behalf. Because um, if you can't see the information, it's very hard to integrate. Um, just to, if you could just uh, you know elaborate a little bit more on any of your upcoming or current or recent proprietary tools which you've launched, which uh, you know helps clients drive growth and engagement. Mm, love to. Uh, we we, we, we um, uh, we've got a very interesting roadmap through through the end of this year into twenty twenty four. We we we're really trying to drill down into. Um, uh, more MMM driven thinking across the whole funnel. Um, uh, I think uh, we know that it's a difficult time for marketers at the moment. We know that efficiency and effectiveness are increasingly important. And uh, we're automating the collection and the modeling of uh, sales data through the funnel and making that an integral part of our planning process so that every dollar that's being planned is being, is being given the same attention based on its business effect as performance media would do and and I think that'll be one of the big trends is really ha- how do people think about their brand media with the same care and attention and optimization mindset that they that they think about lower funnel conversion work we're also in an era where there's constant disruption every six months you hear there's this uh, as as you would say you know the, the there's a new technology which is taking over people are talking about it it's kind of the spotlight syndrome so and the other side you know a lot of people also say that the uh, consumer is always at uh, you know at the top of uh, he's always in the front and the brand and the agency is always trying to catch up when it comes to technology so in this situation how do you keep the agency and the client up to speed with the way the consumer is evolving at a, such a rapid pace yeah um thankfully we've got some amazing strategists and insight teams right the way across the wave maker network so between us we have i think a broad enough set of capabilities and skills to be able to respond across ai to platform innovations to retail to different to different forms of media planning capability so i think it's impossible for any one person to really have enough um you know deep insight to be able to either build product or work with clients across all of those areas so i think diversifying our talent, diversifying their skill set, diversifying their understanding of cultures and communities so that we're really able to, to bring enough breadth of thinking to clients um, is, is a really important part about how we try and organize our community. Uh, also a word on the in what are your, going to be your focus areas looking ahead and uh, Wavemaker's investment, where are you, wh- where is the money going in terms of proprietary tools, if you could just give us an idea. Absolutely. Um, we're very focused on how we uh, how we can take clients' data and how we can take our first party data and start to model those more effectively with second and third party data owners uh, to to give more choices really about how we uh, invest clients' budgets backed by data as opposed to backed by panel data or sales. That's obviously a very time consuming, budget consuming exercise to build and evolve and train those platforms. But I think that will be the main focus both of WaveMaker, but also of Group M over the, over the next 12 or 24 months is, is really continuing to build out that platform, make sure it works globally, and make sure that we, we're giving all of our people access to the right data to help them do the work with clients. Uh, finally, coming to your Indian team, mm-hmm. a word on them, and uh, they've had some impressive wins in the recent past. Mm-hmm. What do you believe sets apart the Indian team from the competition or even from the other networks in your organization well i, I you, you've 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 um met the team at a, 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 a business there it, it's it's a it's a brilliant leadership group uh uh ajay is a fantastic leader and he he, he brings in you know superb talent superb specialist strategy to talent um uh, uh i'm delighted that our cso in the market um 
Premjeet Soda is now being moved on to becoming our global head of analytics. Uh, we've just hired a new chief creative officer there. So it's absolutely the spirit inside that group is, is unstoppable. You sense it when you go into the office. You can feel it when they're with their clients. And I think, uh, I think when you're turning up to work every day with that talent and that energy, then you're going to win or, you know, year after year. And that's, that's just what they've done. But last year was a phenomenal year for Wavemaker in India. How are they going to keep up with the pace? <laughs> what is the, what's your, what's been your, uh, you know, is there any specific goal that you've given them for this year? Uh, um, I, I'm, I'm sure they're going to find a way. Uh, that, um, I think they are doubling down on creativity and they're doubling down on analytics. And those are the two, you know, power drivers of our business and our industry. If we're consistently smarter and if we're consistently more creative in, in our problem solving, we're always going to be a partner that clients will want to come and work with. Finally, you mentioned Indian creativity. Is there anything you believe from India that could travel across the world to the other markets in your network or even in terms of talent? You know, do you believe that that can also uh, travel across something you've seen from India mm -hmm. uh, in terms of people, in terms of the work they've done? 100%. We, 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 we probably show more work from our Indian team around the network than from any other market, um, you know, internally and to clients. I particularly love the way that they, they keep doubling down on areas of, of kind of core competence and, and, and um, uh, uh, specialism. So they've got a great center of excellence around generative AI um, and, 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 and how data works into that. And they've gone again and again in that area. Um, they did some great work for, uh, for, um, for Center Fresh. Uh, in February this year, some on-pack QR generative voice AI, and I think that capability having a having a demonstrable center of excellence with real a real body of work to you know to back up our claims is really important. And the rest of our network look at that capability and look at the success that the Indian teams had deploying it for, for clients. And I think it inspires everybody to want to get to that level of expertise and that level of confidence. Thank you so much, Stuart, Thank for your time. It was lovely meeting you.